Welcome to Worship St. Olaf Lutheran Church. Here we are beginning the year together of 2021, and we do hope it is a better year. In fact, we're going to live into this year with more shalom, and we'll unpack that in the message today. But we begin our worship time with a combination of come thou font of every blessing into amazing grace. Let's sing that together now. in your name, whether in our home or 
whether or in person, Lord, we're here to honor you. So Lord, we set aside our tasks. We set aside our busyness and we turn our hearts to you this day and this year. We invite you, Lord, to give us an extra measure of your grace, an extra measure of your shalom in 2021. Because Lord, we come as people who are broken. We come as people who need you to shalom us, to grant us that peace, that wholeness, that completeness. And so, Lord, we come to you now, naming those things that we want to release to you and ask your mercy upon us in the silence of our hearts. saved a wretch like me and you are amazing and your grace is amazing and because of what you've done on the cross because of the forgiveness you extended to each and every one of us we can now stand tall and live this new life filled with shalom with a confidence that in Jesus name we may be well Our gospel reading comes from the second chapter of Luke, starting with verses 41 through 52. This is the boy Jesus in the temple. Now, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went on a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in divine and human favor. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Want to get away? I sure do. What a great Southwest Airline commercial. Maybe we get away this summer. Let's hope, huh? But back in the day, Jesus got away once a year, at least once a year. He and his family hit the big city of Jerusalem every year for the week-long Passover celebration. It was a holy time. This yearly ritual gave life to Jewish people, just as vacations or excursions give life to us today. There's a song that captures this Passover celebration well. It's called Holy Time. As these were the activities of celebrating Passover, that is to gather, to worship, love, dance, and dream. It's a song that we used to sing often in Colorado. And it sounds something like this. This is holy time, gather together to worship you, love one another, and as we pray, and as we sing, And as we dance, and as we dream, O Lord, I beg of you just this one thing. And it goes on. But it reminds us that this is holy time, and 2021 is going to be holy time. I'm hopeful it's going to be a better year. 
holistically than 2020. I believe that as we gather to pray and sing and worship as St. Olaf, whether online or in person, and as we love one another through the phone, text, Facebook, or face-to-face, that God is going to bring us an extra measure of his shalom in 2021. Yearly, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and his siblings walked the road to Jerusalem, which was 64 miles and took about four days to walk. Whether on the road or in the city, they greeted one another with the highest regard with one simple yet very beautiful and complex word, shalom. So I greet you with the word shalom, and you can reply back, shalom. If you watched or were here Christmas Eve, you would have heard the message on the Prince of Peace. The word for peace in the Hebrew language is shalom, and in the Greek language, it is arene. I'd like to invite us into this new year of 2021 to focus on shalom as the word we embrace and live into all aspects of our lives. First, let's refresh ourselves with a short teaching about shalom from the Bible Project. The word peace is common in most languages. People can talk about peace treaties or times of peace. It means the absence of war. And in the Bible, the word peace can refer to the absence of conflict, but it also points to the presence of something better in its place. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And in the New Testament, the Greek word is erene. The most basic meaning of shalom is complete or whole. The word can refer to a stone that has a perfect whole shape with no cracks. It can also refer to a completed stone wall that has no gaps and no missing bricks. Shalom refers to something that's complex with lots of pieces that's in a state of completeness, wholeness. It's like Job who says his tents are in a state of shalom because he counted his flock and no animals are missing. This is why shalom can refer to a person's well-being. Like when David visited his brothers on the battlefield, he asked about their shalom. The core idea is that life is complex, full of moving parts and relationships and situations. And when any of these is out of alignment or missing, your shalom breaks down. Life is no longer whole. It needs to be restored. In fact, that's the basic meaning of shalom when you use it as a verb. To bring shalom literally means to make complete or restore. So Solomon brings shalom to the unfinished temple when he completes it. Or if your animal accidentally damages your neighbor's field, you shalom them by giving them a complete repayment for their loss. You take what's missing and you restore it to wholeness. The same goes for human relationships. In the book of Proverbs, to reconcile and heal a broken relationship is to bring shalom. And when rival kingdoms make shalom in the Bible, it doesn't just mean they stop fighting. It also means they start working together for each other's benefit. This state of shalom is what Israel's kings were supposed to cultivate, and it rarely happened. So the prophet Isaiah, he looked forward to a future king, a prince of shalom. And his reign would bring shalom with no end. A time when God would make a covenant of shalom with his people and make right all wrongs and heal all that's been broken. This is why Jesus' birth in the New Testament was announced as the arrival of Irene. Remember, that's the Greek word for peace. Jesus came to offer his peace to others. Like when he said to his followers, my peace I give to you all. The apostles claimed that Jesus made peace between messed up humans and God when he died and rose from the dead. The idea is that he restored to wholeness the broken relationship between humans and their creator. This is why the Apostle Paul can say Jesus himself is our Irene. He was the whole complete human that I am made to be but have failed to be. And now he gives me his life as a gift. And this means that Jesus' followers are now called to create peace. Paul instructed local churches to keep their unity through the bond of peace, which requires humility and patience and bearing with others in love. Becoming people of peace means participating in the life of Jesus, who reconciled all things in heaven on earth, restoring peace through his death and resurrection. So peace takes a lot of work because it's not just the absence of conflict. True peace requires taking what's broken and restoring it to wholeness, whether it's in our lives, our relationships, or in our world. And that's the rich biblical concept of peace.
I invite you this year to evaluate daily your shalom level. That's right. How is your well-being? In other words, how are you feeling? How are you thinking? How are you simply being? Has your shalom broken down some? Where has it broken down? And how may you restore it? Or how may God restore it? Is it health-related? Relationship-oriented? Do you know that Jesus came to give you complete shalom, complete peace? Jesus gave us his life as a gift to shalom us, to make right what was broken, to heal us and make us well, to make us complete. Today, I'd like us to prepare ourselves for 2021 as a year of increased shalom, completeness, and wholeness. First, for many of us, our past year of 2020 was turned a bit sideways, even upside down, or just plain unpredictable. This can lead some of us into a state of what we call melancholy. It's where we may have a bit of unrest, maybe some sadness or depression, or low energy. It's a time in which our well-being is not at its peak, but rather we are a little lower than we're used to. God desires for us to have shalom, a sense of order and completeness in which our well-being is functioning at a high level. Most every year, I take the last week of December and early January to reflect on this coming year and to craft SMART goals for the year. It helps me to be intentional and to hopefully raise my level of wellness in many different dimensions of my life. So as you can see here, here's what a SMART goal makes up. The more specific you can be, the better. And it needs to be... Um, Measurable, that you can define what does it look like, how often, etc. Is it attainable? Is it really realistic? Is it something that is important to you? And what is the time frame? Maybe it's a short-term goal, maybe it's a long-term goal. Now, you may not be like me, which I really enjoy this goal setting. But I encourage you to maybe write one goal for a variety of aspects of your life. Now, here's one way to understand shalom as a quotient by using eight dimensions of the wellness wheel. Consider each dimension and reflect on that area of your life. And then ask yourself, is it well? If not, how may it be improved or made better? And then you may write that down. Now, as you can see here, here's a list of my goals. These are simple and long-term, um, short and long-term goals that help increase God's shalom in my life in 2021. Yes, some of it's in my hands, some of it's in the Lord's hands. Many of these goals are simply habits or patterns or rhythms of life that will give structure, meaning, and purpose. Let me just highlight a few here. As you can see, I start with sleep and rest and uh, kind of the pattern of how I'd like to sleep and get to bed earlier and just kind of ease into sleep. Um, I, I want to take some um, time away into solitude, and I have a place where I can go for that. You could see physical fitness, daily yoga, um, ideally, at least in the winter, a weekly hike, but during much of the year, daily walking, uh, weekly softball, believe it or not, and some golf, of course. But you could see how I, I want to eat, um, how the emotional support with friends and various ways to do that. Etc. But one key thing is also you can see that I've got a weekly Bible study. I always have a Bible study with the men, but also one that I'm going to dig a little deeper in with the Bethel series. So those are a variety of means. You can feel free to talk to me with those sometime if you have some curious uh, questions about them. Now let's turn to Jesus in the temple. So in relation to our scripture reading for today, Jesus is 12 years old. He's still a child. He steals away from his parents, and he starts to listen to the elders in the temple. But not only does he listen, he interjects by mutually sharing his thoughts and ideas to edify the group gathered. Let's understand a bit more about Jesus' background. This is 2,000 years ago, okay? It's significant to note that Jesus could read. There were schools in Galilee and the countryside, and Jesus learned to read and to write. He also knew the rabbinic style of learning was to answer back with a question when asked with a question. This country bumpkin also knew his Hebrew Bible well. 
This contributed to his wisdom and stature, ultimately his influence as a servant leader, whether young or older. This seems to be an honorable goal for us as his followers as well, to know our Bible better. So new this year for me and for some 30 plus people and perhaps yourself will be a similar opportunity of learning from the scriptures together. Yes, the Bethel Bible series. We are all learners or disciples. We may lack confidence and feel we lack much understanding or knowledge of the Bible. However, this is precisely what the course does. It helps us identify and reflect on the major themes throughout the Bible. There's 120 in each testament. And there will be a PowerPoint teaching available in person on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., at the same time online through Zoom, and it will be recorded. So if that time doesn't work for you, can we watch it at any other time during the week? The goal or discipline is to simply take the time to learn. And I anticipate a rich time of possibly new and deep insights about God, faith, and the Bible, and some friendships that will form as well. This could increase our shalom significantly. I believe it's going to be a holy time. I'll conclude with this. As your rabbi teacher, or pastor as you call me, know that I'm available to you anytime. It is a time where you might need encouragement, discernment and direction, prayer, anything. Don't hesitate to be in touch. My hope and prayer for each one of you this year is an increased sense of shalom, that your well-being would be better, that it may be well with your soul in 2021. Let us pray. Creator God, healer of our souls, we welcome your Holy Spirit to increase our shalom this year. Guide us down a path that is fulfilling, refreshing, renewing, that our internal spirit would be reignited, that it would be well with our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, this refrain, it is well with my soul, is so beautiful, and I hope that becomes true for all of us this year in 2021, when peace like a river, let us sing together.
confess our faith in reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Opportunity comes with the mindset of starting fresh in a new year. We join together praying for the church, the world, and all in need. With many hospitals filling quickly with corona patients, give us hope in the fight against this pandemic. Through the new vaccines and other treatments now available, help us to actually round the corner in dealing with this virus, bringing the infection tallies down and lessening the severity of the symptoms it causes. Invigorate our doctors and nurses, able to battle the virus with renewed energy, with the vision of an end in sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, 2020 has left most of us lacking shalom. People out of work, in our event schedule stripped bare, unable to visit friends and family as we had. Take our addictions, take our worries, and fill these voids, giving us true shalom, wholeness, as only you can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus, left behind, was active in discussion about the Torah, learning, and helping others to learn, let us use the Bethel Bible series here to be active in the conversation, learning from others about you through greater understanding of your word, Help to clear our confusion about some of the deeper meanings and to see the bigger picture woven across the various books of the Bible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please join me in praying for those from our congregation. William, Sheila K., Carrie, Kathy L., Andrew Schneider, and Addie Craftsman, And for those serving in the military around the globe and those who have returned home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
there is unrest in the world. As we work towards peace, there are countries that work against it, boldly making threats. Lord, ensure the health and safety of our president, this nation's leaders, and our country. It is written that true peace will not occur until your return. But we ask, Lord, that you keep us from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, the changing of our calendar gives us a symbolic example of starting fresh. Let us use this new start to reflect on ways to strengthen our relationship with you and to better serve others in this new year. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you are gathered in your home, you may feel free to take some bread and some grape juice or wine out to join me for communion. As you recall, on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Following supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I love this song, All the People Said Amen. It's a great way for us to kind of go on with our day, kind of a marching tune. Um, And it reminds us that as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, as we do life together with one another, uh, we're not alone. And we get the pleasure of, even in our dark times, to be together and have that support as the body of Christ. So let's sing, All the People Said Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends.
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.